situation. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, I, I don't remember now. Bezrat Hashem, Bezrat Hashem. Uh, I told the Chavar before we started recording that I revealed the secret. I revealed the secret to Donnie. Last night I was super weird. I, I sent out like the the weirdest, weirdest uh, uh, time for the for the for the link stealing Torah, the whole thing, loving Torah, not stealing Torah, loving Torah. And it was at such a weird time. I was trying to like do it in a way where Donnie wouldn't know that I was coming for the up rough. Anyways, I revealed it, <laughs> revealed to Donnie today. Um, I wasn't in Israel last night at two in the morning doing a uh, loving tour with everyone. I was actually here at 7 p.m. So I wasn't that crazy. And uh, the flex was fake. The flex was definitely fake. But Baruch Hashem, we don't have to be undercover anymore. We could just be Nigla. <laughs> we revealed it to Donnie. Donnie knows. I was on the phone with him, and it was just like so sad. Like I just couldn't, I couldn't hold it in anymore. Oh, wow! The Weinstein's and Yehuda Goldberg. Yehuda Goldberg, welcome. Such a holy uh, chaver. Wow, this is really fun. My mother also, my mother also loves Torah. Oh, we all love Torah. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. We're just trying to love Torah. Also, Chavra. The, the yearning for redemption is just going to get higher and higher and higher and higher. Chavra, Baruch Hashem, today we got Rav Judah Michelle. Tomorrow, just another secret, another secret, another secret. It's just going to go higher and higher and higher. Two of Hashem Kor Yisrael for Pesach Ruven Ben Yosef Asara, Baruch Abbas Yehudis, Miriam Dori Bezchani, Uchev, Edion Abbas Basi, Ashir Abbas Basi, Asana Ruven Ben Mani, and every Neshama and Klai Yisrael. Baruch Hashem. Yibon Hashem, help us follow the path of the Shuba. In all of our days, who can say I have cleansed my heart and purified myself of sin? You know our hearts and how we often have mixed and impure motives for even the good that we do. Even when we are confessing our sins, we have improper thoughts and motives. We find it impossible to say a single word sincerely and honestly. Our sins are real enough, but we have a block against owning up to them. So help us to keep going forward on the path of teshuva and repent over our repentance. I, I think that's the best line in all the Kute Tfilos is repenting over our repentance, making amends for the inadequacy of our er earlier teshuva. Chavra, I didn't bring the 24-7 Halakha book to America, and we could say America openly. Um, we don't have to hide because Donnie, the whole thing, we revealed to, to Donnie, we're good. So we're just going to start from, from uh, Chalik uh, Aleph, uh, Simon Aleph, and the Kitzar Shofan Arach. We just have to start now. We have to start now. Last night, the, the quick uh, tour that we sent, it was all about starting now. Rebona Shoyalam, Shivisi Hashem the Negdi Tamid. I have set Hashem before us constantly, before me constantly, is a fundamental concept of the Torah and of the spiritual levels of the righteous who walk before God for the manner in which a person sits, his movements and ex, in, uh, activities are not the same when he's alone at home. As his manner of sitting, his movements and activities when he's in the pre presence of a great king. Oh, Ethan Lamb, unbelievable. Similarly, his speech and expression are not when the company of his household and family members is comparable to his speech when he's in the presence of a king, because then when in the presence of a king, he certainly examines all of his movements and speech. Right? When, when we picture and view Hashem in front of us, we're automatically different. 
so they should be properly refined. Certainly when a person will take to his heart that the great king, the holy one, blessed is he whose glory fills the world, as we all know, is standing over him and observing his actions, as is stated near Miyahu, if a person were to hide in concealment, would I not see him, says Hashem? Indeed, I fill the entire heaven and earth. Certainly upon realizing this, one will immediately overtaken by fear and submiss uh, submissiveness out of the awe of Hashem, bless his name, and he will be humbled and bashful before him. Bezrat Hashem, Chavra. May we always have the, the, I guess, the awareness that Hashem is in front of us at all times and that will help, help uh, better our movements and decisions. Bezrat Hashem. Sicha 38. Last night we did a random Sicha, not random. I mean, none of the Sichos are random, but we did 54 because we're trying to do a short one. Obviously, it's great in length um, if we we're all there and we were able to expand, but um, we went out of order. But we're back to Sicha 38, Baruch Hashem. Or Sicha, no, Sicha 39. Sicha 39, my bad. So we all have to open up our hearts because that's what the Sicha is all about, opening up our hearts as we see the base of Mikdash right in front of us. Unbelievable. If you guys look at Avi Kirkowski's screen. You should be able to feel another person's troubles in your own heart. This is especially true when many are suffering. It is impossible to recognize another's anguish clearly and still not feel in your heart. When an entire community is in distress, you should surely feel it and its agony in your heart. If you do not feel it, you should strike your head against the wall, meaning you should strike your head against the walls of your heart. It's the deepest. Chavra, we, we might... <laughs> <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> Chaim, you're, you're lighting me up Chaim and Gila are lighting me up right now unbelievable <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> really we, we, we have we have to soften up our heart a little right? We, we, our heart shouldn't be frozen ice cream it should be soft it should be melted ice cream soft serve, it really should be, yeah, it should be soft, serve. No. soft serve ice cream oh that's the title that's the title Gavaldic Oh, right, oh. really, really, and what it means by banging our heads into the walls of our heart, it means putting our hearts in a microwave for two minutes. <laughs> That's what it means. Wow, this is the meaning of the verse in Devarim. You should know this day and take it to your heart. You must bring the realization from your mind to your heart. Understand this well. Understand this well. But when Rabbi Nachman says we should really understand this well, we later heard. That the Rebbe once said, this is the meaning of the verse, Chizkiyahu turned his face to the wall. The face that he turned was his mind, bringing it inside the walls of his heart. Rabbi Nachman concludes the Sicha, one's true face is his mind, and the mind illuminates the face, the face from within. Now, Avi Karakowski texted me earlier today about the Halig of Vorker, the Vorker Rebbe, and how special he is. Now he's a leader. And he's the tzaddik, the whole thing. And I couldn't help but uh, play back, go back in the archives and uh, share a little bit about the story of the Vorker, a condensed version. If Avi Kirkowski wants to share the whole thing, he can word for word because he knows it by heart. But Kitzer, a Jew once went to the Vorker and he said, hey, look at Vorker, um, my son is not doing well. He's actually in great pain on the brink of death. The gates seem like they're closed, and I don't know what to do. His mom was like crying out to the Vorker. And he was expecting the Vorker to do some miraculous uh, prayers and the whole thing. And the Vorker basically said that the gates in heaven are closed. Like he thought for a second, uh, you know, a couple of seconds, uh, replied to the Siyad, the gates in the heavens are closed. There's nothing I could do. The Siyad was mamish brokenhearted. Mamish just like gave up all hope walked away from the Vorker, went onto his wagon. Then the Vorker, the Vorker moments later, got on his wagon. He started chasing after this Yid and said, wait, 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 wait. And then the Yid got off his wagon and the Vorker sat down with him. He said, the gates may be closed in heaven, but we could cry together. And we could cry together. And this Yid was with the Vorker. They were both crying. 
and this Yid was looking at the Vorker and he's like, I, I don't get it. The Rebbe is crying harder than I'm crying for my own son's pain. That's how intense, that's how open the Vorker's heart was. Mama's feeling Am Yisrael's pain. And then moments later, the Vorker started dancing and started to be joyful. And the Yid was like, what, what happened? What happened? And the Vorker's like, get a L'chaim! Go to your wagon and get some wine! Let's make a L'chaim! And he's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? My son's broken. My son's about to die. The gates of heaven are closed. And the Vorker said, because of our tears, the gates in, the, the gates, uh, in heaven were open. There's always two tears. We know from Rav Shlomo that Mayim is plural. There's no singular version of Mayim. Unless, I don't know. There's no singular version of Mayim, right? You're right, you're right. So Rav Shlomo says that there's always two tears, meaning when we cry, Hashem cries. Bezrat Hashem, Chavra. We are hardly open. After the Zoom, we should just put our hearts into the microwave, or maybe they're open right now. But uh, questions, comments, please feel free. We had to mention the Vorker. We had to. Yeah. I never heard of Vorker. So a video that went viral. I just got sent it like four times this morning in WhatsApp groups. Is uh, there was a father of a child in Golani that was killed, and he went to Reb Chaim, and he went in Reb Chaim's grandson told Reb Chaim who the guy was who came to visit. And Reb Chaim looked up and said his name, and then said exactly what happened. Like he knew the guy. And then Reb Chaim started crying. That wasn't crying anymore. Reb Chaim started crying because he felt this pain. And then he told Reb Chaim, he told Reb Chaim told this guy that his son was as close as one could possibly be to the Kisei Kavod, and he was next to Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And then this guy obviously was moved. He went, drove away from Bnei Brak, went to Ramat Gan to fill up gas. And he said a random woman approached him and said, hello, father of uh, father of this Chaya. And he said, hi, who are you? She said, doesn't matter, but know that your son is as close as possible. You can say, I can vote his next to Rabbi Yochai and Rabbi Kiva. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That is crazy. It's really wild. And there's also a story about Aaron Lee Steinman that once they heard a plane crash with Israeli soldiers on board, so he started crying just for a long, long time. I, th this yeah. tour is just so applicable to nowadays. I mean, what's happening in Ukraine, the recent terrorist attack in, in uh, Israel, Beresheva, I mean, all these yeah. moments, like, this is exactly where we need to apply this Torah from, right? Like, it's so hard. It could be so hard to connect, right? Even if we're in Israel and we hear it happening, like, miles away from, you know, short distance away from us, and, you yeah. know, what's happening in Ukraine, Mamash, we have to bind our hearts uh, to every situation, to the communities that are in English. You should believe it, you gotta be. Right. Wow. Yeah. Any other questions, yeah. comments? Please feel free. Uh, oh, Aiden, Aiden, Gavaldik. I don't know. I just wanna, just wanna, uh, in the, when I, the Borker, that story is, um, I forget, is, is it of Yaakov Yitzchak Borka or something, something Yitzchak Borka? Um, but the one I was I was referring to just just for clarity's sake was his son of Menachem Mendel, I think, worker. Pretty sure that's his name. Two sons, both of them were Hasidic masters. But the other one I thought you were gonna say that story, I forgot even that that was his father. But the other the other story you probably know about it, but it's very applicable as well to the idea of um, of really sitting with like the tears of Amistra. Um, but it's even in, in a different way, like a different way of approaching it. Uh, th this of uh, this worker Rebbe was called the Silent Rebbe. You know, maybe some of us have heard of him. I never heard it before until I read the story last night. Mama, she was a Silent Rebbe. Like people would go and meet with him, they wouldn't say anything. They would just sit with him in silence. And people say, you know, like <laughs> the worker was very high. But imagine how elevated his students must have been, like to have a Rebbe and to be able to to be able to connect someone who barely barely spoke to you. They'd say like his sitting would go and they just sit together with him for like 12 hours on end. Most people thought, like a lot of cynical people, or Shlomo calls them the, the straight the Hasid and the Yashar individuals, you know, like they all would just say, like, this guy obviously knows nothing. He, he's too simple to even learn a book. He probably doesn't know anything. Um, but there's a story just in very short form, like the, 
uh, one of the the workers top students uh, was going to become the new like uh was moving to a new town and the the rabbi of the town the chief rabbi um he wanted the student wanted the rabbi to meet the worker rabbi his rabbi so he said you know come meet the rabbi he's a very smart individual a master of torah and kabbalah um, but a, a Yashar individual, he said, like, I'm not going to the Borker. You know, he, he doesn't know anything. He doesn't speak. He's uh, useless, you know, and um, so he wouldn't go. He said, fine, just come in. It was in uh, Biala, the city where they lived. In Biala, he said, just come to the Rosh Chodesh uh, for bringing. We have a little meal together with the Borker Hasidim. The Rebbe won't even be there. You don't have to go. So he said, okay, he went. So they, he goes to Rosh Chodesh. The rabbi shows up at the door, chief rabbi of Biala, and um he sees all the worker Hasidim are sitting around with huge cups this big of a whiskey, massive cups of whiskey, and they, they fill one up for the, for the rabbi, and uh, he drinks it, and they film another one, and, and all of the worker Hasidim are like down in these drinks, and the rabbi falls asleep, and Roshlama tells us that the worker Hasidim, they had mastered their spirituality to the point where their, their nefesh of spirituality had complete dominion, complete control over their physical body, and as like a proof and an exercise of this, they would drink so much and would not get drunk at all. And the rabbi realized this when he fell asleep that the deepest secrets went on. So he knew he had to go back the next month. So he returns the next month. And this time he had a plan. They fill him up the cup. They're not looking, throws it under the table, fill him up, does it again. He pretends to go to sleep, to, pretends to pass out again. And uh, once, uh, once he passes out, the, the Vorker's uh, top chassid that was there, he says, okay, now the rabbi's asleep. We can, we can really get started. Mended. And um, they pull out the Eitz HaChaim, the deepest, most difficult Kabbalistic book in all of the Jewish literature. And all of the workers, Hasidim, I forgot to make clear, they're all, quote unquote, the simple people, the water carriers, the farmers, the, the physical laborers. What chapter? <laughs> and they start learning the Eitz HaChaim and this, this supposed like Kabbalistic master is telling himself, like, I've been learning Torah my whole life. I thought I knew all the secrets. All of these people I thought were the simplest that I look down on are learning these secrets of the world and of Torah that I literally don't understand a single word. He realized that he was so broken and um, he, he gets up. He thought everyone left. It was all quiet. <laughs> the Hasidim are doing their regular practice. They're all sitting there in silence. And uh, he's like, they're like, you know, Rabbi, like, oh, we, you know, we knew you actually weren't asleep, of course. But like, did you hear what we said? Did you, did you understand? It's like, I didn't get a single word. Whatever, completely broken. And the, the Hasid says, um, okay, fine. Like now you see these water carriers, these physical laborers, they know all the secrets, but I know even more than them. If you think I know a lot, my Rebbe knows beyond, beyond. You have to come meet him now. So now he agrees. They go for Shabbos. Everyone's going to say good Shabbos, shake his hand. It's not like Reb Shlomo or, or you know, Reb Jack Stepner. He's not saying good Shabbos. You know, how are you? Like, what's your job? You know, he just shakes your hand, doesn't say anything, just looks into your soul. But when he sees your soul, he sees into your eyes. He sees your whole life, this life, the next life, all the Gilgulim, all of your missions in life, everything you have done, haven't done. He sees everything. And sometimes he reveals it to you too. So the Chassid and the, and the chief rabbi of Biala are going to get the, the, the good Shabbos bracha. They get separated a bit, whatever. They, they, and they're, they're done. They both said, but he can't find him, the Chassid and the rabbi. He goes to the base midrash, finds the rabbi engrossed in, in learning. He says, what happened? How did it go? He says, I shook the rabbi's hand, the silent Rebbe, who I thought was nothing, who knew nothing, never says anything, never reveals what he knows. And he just looked into my soul without saying anything. And I realized that I've been learning my whole life, but I never felt the light of Torah inside my soul. And when he looked into me and all I, all I felt was Hashem Echad. And I realized the first book I picked up, I ran into the base measure, was the Eitz Chaim, the one I didn't understand. But now every single word is shining within me. And I realized wow. the, the, the power of the holy silence. And then he goes wow. into the outro and talks about the power of the holy silence. It's beyond, it's beyond. Wow. Wow. Perfect. That is unbelievable. That is unbelievable. I like, I'll never, I don't know where you are, Kira. Are you like in a Costco for like farm? <laughs> is is that what I'm figuring out? <laughs> Mendy, Mendy, Mendy. Walking around, <laughs> I think you're in a Costco for, for Yiddish kite. I don't know. I, I can't. I every, can't. Every, every, whoa. every single detail. What the gaula? The, the Shabbos Hagadol Drasha. I'm going to find the, the audio for it. I want to send it to you guys. It's from Moshe Weinberger. This was like last year, um, right before Pesach. 
and um, right, yeah, right before Pesach. And Ramosha Weinberger was talking about how there's Shinemar people, and there's people who just are straight in their action and their doers. Right? There's people who know how to quote Sukkim and they know how to quote Rebbeim, they know how to quote the Eitzachayim, or are they living the Eitzachayim? It's mamash a deep thing. So silence is also pretty big. It's pretty big. Right. All right. That was a bad connection. <laughs> we should all be the simcha. We should all be healthy. We should be successful in, in both the Ruchnias and the Gashmias in our life. We're so close to Shabbos, so close to Pesach. And uh, just keep going. And Donnie's wedding, of course. Chavra, be well.